There are many branch lines that diverge off the West Coast Main Line, but in today's program we will be looking at one in particular, the six mile long line to St Albans Abbey. The branch starts here at Watford Junction, lying 17 and a half miles north of London Euston. A large forecourt bus station is adjacent to the Main Line station, with bus routes serving various destinations around Hertfordshire but two of these, the 142 and 258, head into the Greater London area. In addition to this, many passengers who come from the trains line up outside bus stop number 4 to board one of the many shuttle buses that take them to the Warner Brothers Studios, where filming of the Harry Potter movies took place. The railway station has 10 platforms, with 6 bays and 4 through lines. Platforms 1 to 4 are used exclusively by the 3rd Rail London Overground services from here to London Euston. The through lines are served by express services operated by Avanti West Coast and London North Western Railway. The latter has more services calling here and therefore manages the station. Southern trains start here in Bay Platform 10, operating services to Clapham Junction via the West London Line. However, some services extend to East Croydon. Separate from the main station and down a sort of alleyway, we find Platform 11, the platform being dedicated to the St Albans Abbey service. It is, of course, a through road to allow for empty stock movements, etc. The branch to St Albans was electrified on the 25 kV AC system in 1985 and is today used by class 350-0 EMUs. As we leave Watford Junction, we are already restricted to a 20 mile an hour maximum due to the severe curve ahead, which takes us from a northwesterly heading to the northeast. This sign is a level crossing warning board. The 54 below it is the cab secure radio frequency number that the driver must now put in. miles an hour is the maximum line speed. The 6 mile 45 chain branch was the first railway to open to the city of St Albans on the 5th of May 1858 with two intermediate stations. Today the passenger services are operated by London North Western Railway with all stations with the exception of Watford Junction being unstaffed although passengers can buy their tickets on the train or at the various ticket machines placed at the stations. The first station on the branch is Watford North, opened 52 years after the line in 1910. Originally the station was known as Callowlands and was built to serve the developing residential and industrial areas which still thrive today. The station was renamed Watford North in 1927.
The white light indicates to the driver that the lowering barrier procedure is complete and safe to traverse. We pass over the only road level crossing on our journey today, the automatic half barriers at Bushy Mill Lane. In the direction of St Albans, the guard presses a plunger on the platform to lower the barriers, whereas in the other direction, the train depresses the treadles located in the forefoot of the running line. The line is signalled on the one train working system. To put it quite simply, only one train is permitted onto the branch at any one time, under the control of Wembley Main Signal Control Centre. The white cross with the blue background to the left of the platform reminds drivers that the automatic warning system is not applicable in this direction. Garston Station was surprisingly opened during the beaching era, in this case by the Mayor of Watford in February 1966. Basic station facilities are provided here with a new shelter and lighting, but also artwork by children from the Grove Academy. pass under the M1 motorway. The urban area has now given way to a more rural landscape. Notice that we are now travelling on continuous rail.
Located halfway on the branch, we arrive at Brickett Wood, one of the two original intermediate stations to open with the line back in 1858. The station building, long disused and at the time of filming under restoration, is the only surviving building on the line. Being halfway on the line, a passing loop was added to accommodate the long excursion trains that arrived here with Edwardian families so that they could enjoy the fresh air, woodlands and the two large fun fairs that once stood nearby. Back in the 1950s, in a response to threats coming from Soviet aggression, five atomic bomb-proof control bunkers were built. Their purpose was to take over the running of the railway network from the Euston Station Control Room in the event of war. Only one remains today, constructed in 1954 and is located between the railway cottages and the trees. A similar sole survivor is in Scotland at Burnt Island. line bridge takes us over the M25, London's orbital motorway. We pass mile post 4, measured from Watford Junction. W is self-explanatory. Howwood is the most recent addition to the Abbey Line, opening in October 1988 to coincide with the overhead electrification of the route. A short branch line was laid here in the 1860s during the construction of the Midland Main Line's London extension, helping to carry navvies and building materials. It never carried any passenger trains and suggests it closed between 1883 and 1898. We are now back on jointed track. It also appears that it has been a while since a weed killing train has been on the branch. The final station on the branch is Park Street, another original. The station was known as Park Street and Frogmore, but the suffix was dropped in 1974. The 
services over the Abbey branch are hourly, seven days a week. Pass under the North Orbital Road, the A414. warning of the 15 miles an hour restriction ahead. This is a fixed distance signal, signifying how close we are to the end of the line. Coming in from the right was the former branch line to Hatfield that was built by the Great Northern Railway. Their principal aim was to offer another direct route to London by means of their main line into King's Cross. The railway was in operation between 1865 and 1968, though passenger services had ended as early as 1951. We will explore this former branch shortly. So we arrive at the single platform of St Albans Abbey. You can even see it used to be an island platform, but that was taken out of use many years ago. When the Midland Railway opened through the city with their London extension to St Pancras in 1868, they opened a station called St Albans City, which retains this name to this day. The Abbey appendage wasn't added to the station name boards here until 1924. There is a tight six minute turnaround before the train returns back to Watford Junction. The station takes its name from the Cathedral and Abbey Church of St Alban, located only a short walk away from the station. Much of its architecture dates from Norman times, officially becoming a cathedral in 1877, and at 85 metres long, it has the longest nave of any cathedral in England. The closed railway to Hatfield was also another short branch line running for 6 miles and 34 chains. Much of the route today has now been incorporated into the Auburn Way footpath and cycleway, which is part of the National Cycle Network Route number 61. The original route diverged here and passes through woodlands next to the River Ver with its angling club and riverside road fishery. After this, the cycleway comes into a residential area and the first closed station we encounter is St Albans London Road. This is still in near original condition and now used by a nursery. The route continues, passing underneath the Midland Main Line in the process. 
a little distance beyond, many of the pedestrians will notice an old platform. This belonged to Salvation Army Halt. When opened in 1897, it was initially a private non-timber halt for the staff of the Messrs Sander and Sons Company, which had established an orchid growing business in the camp district. There were sidings associated with the firm's greenhouses, enabling the swift dispatch of the orchids to the markets. Salvation Army personnel also used the station, hence the name of the halt. Finally, there was even a short branch line east of the halt that served the Hertfordshire County Mental Hospital. The platform remains of Hill End Station, having opened in 1899, intended to serve Hill End Hospital. This was another mental facility. An old photograph shows us what the hospital looked like, designed by George Thomas Hind. The hospital closed in 1995 and the buildings were demolished and the site has now been redeveloped for residential usage. Notice the wooden gates either side of Hill End Road, designed to reminisce of what wooden railway level crossing gates used to look like when they were dotted all along this line and placed in various other parts of the country. It's a pleasant autumn day walking along this old railway line. Smallford Station was opened one year after the line in 1866, but had the name of Springfield until renaming took place in 1879. The former station building still exists and is now surrounded by an industrial area. Splendidly restored and appropriate indeed, Naced Hyde Halt, even though closed, is well tended to. This is a closed station railway enthusiast's dream, with the old station signage, the platform itself, the Victorian lamp standards and interestingly enough, old milk containers on a stationary trolley. A distant semaphore signal and part of the standard gauge track on top of wooden sleepers all suffice here. Again another former wooden level crossing gate, harping back to a time where it would have straddled Ellen Brook Lane. Signage abounds this delightful location on the Auburn Way. High praise indeed to the volunteers who recreated this former halt, which had in fact only been around for 41 years. The Auburn Way has now deviated away from the original railway path, as the A1M motorway cuts through. But if you fancy a break or even a shop, there is the Galleria shopping complex. There is no trace today of Lempsford Road Halt, open from 1942 to 1951, and as such the shortest lived halt on the line. Its main purpose from when it opened was for the workers at the nearby de Havilland aircraft factory. The Auburn Way is coming to an end and curves to face the south, once joining the East Coast mainline here at Hatfield North Junction. Express trains from as far afield as Edinburgh and Leeds fly through the station, heading for London King's Cross. Nowadays managed by Thameslink, trains stop here every 15 minutes.